526 Delta Sierra is down right now for its 100 hour inspection. We've got a few other things going on. Uh, there's some paint issues that were on the wing tip and aileron, so we've sent those out to get them uh, worked on. 100 hours basically complete, but we did discover during that time that uh, number two cylinder was uh, leaking quite badly. So our compressions went from mid 70s where they're supposed to be to 38, which is a problem. So that's been pulled. We have a new overhauled cylinder on the way. So we're gonna take care of that. Also, magnetos, supposed to be overhauled or replaced about every 500 hours. These were more than overdue because I didn't check the logbook enough. So once we got that, uh, got that number, we said, oh, we gotta put new ones in. So we have two new magnetos. Uh, you can see kind of just on the back side there, that's the uh, uh, backup attitude indicator. It's, uh, it's also bad and we can't get it repaired anymore because they don't make parts to rebuild. So we have an issue with that. So let me start with that. I think we're gonna go with an electronic unit because a new mechanical attitude indicator was $8,000. A rebuilt one was $4,000 and you still have this ancient piece of technology and we can get one for about $3,000 that's electronic and does a lot more than that. So I think that's the route we're going there. Should be pretty simple to install. If we're talking about prices, magnetos. These are uh, overhauled, they're $900 a piece plus install. So there's another 1,800 bucks. The cylinder over here was about $900 plus labor and plus the initial uh, cost of the 100 hour. So all total, this is gonna be like a seven or $8,000 week for me. And uh, yeah, that's a lot of money, but that's the price of having an airplane. Uh, I do lease it back. It does generate a little income that kind of helps uh, offset some of this stuff. Um, and I do some of the work myself. So for instance, here we've got uh, a little ceiling action. There's a, a gap that goes around there. Some of that uh, sealant was falling out and was brittle. So I've redone that, did that myself. And I will replace the attitude indicator, and just get my uh, AMP to look at it. And that will help control the cost a little bit. So. They're fun to have, but they're expensive too. So just weigh that out. Filming the cylinder removal, I thought it was pretty interesting. So I'm gonna put that uh, video right after this and let you check it out. All right, still gotta take the other oil return line off. Of course, we did not film yesterday when we had the ACE intern come in and pull off the prop governor and the, and the uh, oh yeah you know the other things that had to come off to make this ready for the surgeon you know i'm not sure if i really like that guy or not no nah. well some people especially his wife do think he's an <laughs> so i just you know what's that ring called it's in there is it just a sleeve that goes so the, the the cylinder itself is lined by a sleeve okay and it looks like the, the sleeve is separate it looks like the sleeve separated from at the head the inside is that what that's called? from the head of the, the cylinder. Head. Now, I've never actually seen this happen before, this well, type of separation. So, I like to have problems that are unique so you don't get bored with them. Thank you. You know, Thank give you. you something new. Like, for instance, our electrical problem from, from a few months ago. That was a fun one. Thanks, Diamond. <laughs> it's no fun owning an airplane if you don't get to spend a lot of money on fixing it. I don't know if that's true. It's not true. Okay. It's not true. It's right, way more fun. It Putting it in the gas tank doesn't bother me so much. Hopefully the, uh, this video will generate some sponsors. <laughs> um, I'm prominently showing, let's see, there's the Hartzell logo. If you all are watching Hartzell right there, the Lycoming engine, diamond plane, what kind of tools. We want to plug the tools while we're at it. Snappy. It's part of your Baffling inside. We seem to have quite a bit of baffling in this plane. Well, it, it's actually really good. It keeps everything nice and nice, cool. It's nice a pain in the cool. ass to take off, but it's... Gets that air where it needs to be. So the other side of this intake is actually just inserted into the manifold. Huh. And these are two bolts. The exhausts are studs with nuts and your intakes are and that's it. And a big old O-ring right there. Oh, all right. Uh, so we got the EGT, and the yellow one is the cylinder CHT. head temperature, CHT. Mm -hmm. All right. Look at me go. 
and I, I know this uh, this is a starter right here because I just paid for that not too long ago. And <laughs> it's a very nice flywheel that I also paid for paid not for, too yeah. long ago. Yep, yep. The old one's still sitting in the office. Oh, good. Just, uh, we may put that on eBay. How many teeth is it missing? Just two or three, I think, isn't it? <laughs> you take a discount for that. A few teeth missing, you know. This little CH2 socket's pretty cool. It's basically got a big cutout so that you can the keep the wire through it without twisting the wire up too bad. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is take the stress or the pressure off of the lift valves. Okay. And see, so right now this is pushing in your intake valve, which is spring-loaded on here. And if I put both of these on a neutral position, I should be able to push this wrist pin right out. All right, so right now it's in a neutral position. No tension neither, on them. Yeah, neither the exhaust or the intake is opening or closing right now. Okay. There's a wrist pin that comes through here, and sometimes it slides out, sometimes it doesn't. And this one's not. That looks like one of the nine well, maybe. times. Maybe. A little movement. She gave me a little bit here. All right, and then that just slides right out. So on these left ones, the way they work is they got a hole inside right okay. there yeah. and a hole up here. The oil is passed through your push rods, through the rocker arm, into the uh, pist uh, wrist pin, pin area. Yeah. And in doing so, it then leaks out in, and lubricates everything in here. Keeps everything nice and wet in there. All right. This is your push rod. So this, he's got a retaining clip here that holds the push rod tubes in. Okay. And it's the nut with a little keeper on it. And you gotta knock the tab off the keeper. All right. Now comes the push tubes. Pull they just pull right out. Right out! Right out! <laughs> they pull right out. There we go. There's one. All right, cylinder wrenches. I was gonna say, is that some kind of a specialty wrench? I'm it guessing is. it is. It sure is. is. Yeah. yeah, they are specialty wrenches because once you get on the bottom side, it's almost impossible to get these off. So these are the sock, these are the nuts here that these wrenches are made for. All right, so we've spent about 40 minutes for this moment. Got it. Piston looks like it's in good shape. All right, there's your jug. There it is. So up at the top, this right here is gonna be the cam for your intake. This is gonna be the lifter for the intake. All right. And this one, you can't really see it, but right here on this side is for the exhaust. See it? Uh, I can see it. I don't know if the camera, yeah, over on that right hand side, there's a there's a gap that shouldn't be there. Big gap. Yeah. 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 That big old gap right there. Where all that air is coming out of. It's getting stuck. I wonder if it was having problems with the intake valve. No, I'm wondering, now that I'm messing with this, if it was the intake valve, because this thing is super stuck. 